this this is the story that uh, continued on until it's continuing right now. I mean, it's the same regiment of uh, propaganda against Iran. So. Senator Frank Church from Idaho, he held the church hearings in the U.S. Senate because he had found out that there were CIA agents in all of the mainstream outlets throughout the United States. At the time, they had identified 300 uh, agents, and it's probably even more than that. So the, the mainstream media in the United States is tightly controlled. It's a tightly controlled propaganda machine. I happened to work with CBS News before the revolution occurred. I witnessed how the image of Iran changed uh, in foreign news reports. I witnessed how Iran became uh, a demonic target through the past 35 years. So yes, there's a, quite a difference between what the reality is in Iran and how it's portrayed for the Western eye. I've been truly blessed to travel all around this beautiful planet of ours, and I've been to places that most people would never even think to go. And this is largely because the mainstream media portrays people in places like Iran and Palestine as evil, as hating the West, as wishing that we would all perish and die. This is absolutely untrue, and the fact is, in places like Palestine and Iran, you're going to find the most generous and hospitable people that you will ever meet. They say in America, uh, you want to kill all of us. They're lying to us. So here I am standing in front of the Christian church. Directly across the street, we've got the Zoroastrian temple. Down the street that way, we've got the Jewish synagogue. And of course, we've got mosques here as well. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all practice together in a city of Tehran, 15, 18 million people, and virtually no sectarian hatred and no sectarian violence. This is not the Iran that we're told about in the West. Very kind. Thank you. We share, we share. I don't eat meat, so we share. <laughs> Thank you. Very kind. I love your interviews. TV. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. You know, the West is obviously uh, presenting Iran as a real threat to. Yes, 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 yes. We know. So the television didn't have any effect on you. You, you know, this is not. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, we don't even have a TV at home. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Neither do we. Neither we do we. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, we have some friends who, who were before in Iran, and also all of them said it's a beautiful country, and the people are very, very friendly. Uh, Ireland. Ireland. Okay. Ireland. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure. Father. 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 It's just, you know, this is the kind of thing that you see in Iran. It's just lovely people, genuine, real, and, you know, it's just so completely contrary to what we're told. It is really criminal the way that Iran and its people are misrepresented. Indeed, a clash of civilizations is being cultivated by a morally bankrupt Western matrix of power that is willfully, intentionally, committing fraud against the people by justifying insane policies that support Israel at all costs. Understanding the fraud, it's time to introduce five amazing Iranians who shatter some of Western civilization's greatest lies. Nader Talibzadeh is a fiercely independent film director and producer who studied film at Columbia University in the United States. He has an audience of millions on his Iranian television program and is immensely respected in Iran and beyond. Siamak Mossadeh is Iranian, a doctor, a member of the Iranian parliament, and he also happens to be Jewish. Wait until you hear what he has to say. Bijan Nobavi is also a member of parliament, and he also happens to be a journalist who went to the front lines as a 16-year-old boy during the Iran-Iraq war, a purely defensive war in which one million Iranians lost their lives. Bijan is among 100,000 plus Iranians who were victims of Saddam Hussein's chemical weapons attacks, attacks that were directed and assisted by the CIA. To this day, he suffers respiratory problems from his exposure to chemical weapons. Dr. Sam Tarabi is one of the infamous Iranian mullahs. 
While mullah has largely become a derogatory term, all the term actually denotes is that one is an Islamic expert. Sam is an extremely thoughtful man who I connected with quite easily as he also happens to have lived and believe it or not surfed in my home state of California. And lastly we will meet Mansura Karami, a gentle widow and mother whose husband was murdered for working on Iran's fictitious nuclear weapons program. Evidence all but proves his murder was carried out by agents of Israeli Mossad. Why would the West be so the, the, the imperial powers be so against Iran because of one thing. As soon as Imam Khomeini took power from the very beginning few months, what happened is we had the day of Quds, the last Friday of the month of Ramadan, the first Ramadan after the revolution, which was everybody's attention was focused upon Jerusalem. And that this is an occupied land, something has to be done about it. It's beyond, you know, the PLO now. So it's the old focus of the entire Muslim world. And this, has, this, this thing has to be resolved. So the, the, the day of God, the day of Palestine, the day of Jerusalem, started at the last Friday of the Ramadan of the first year, the Islamic revolution began, and a simple countdown began. And this ticking of the clock, clock and this attention focused on Israel became paramount. And very quickly, um, the Zionist regime took the lead in, 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 a, in a very strategic way to demonize Iran, and they've been doing it ever since. So that's the starting point. Iran has a history of being hospitable to Christians and Jews. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, tried to destroy the Jewish people. They took refuge with the Persian king. So the Jewish people know very well who we are. It may be interesting for you, for example, four years ago, Israeli government says that I would pay $20,000 to each Iranian Jewish people who immigrated to Israel, but no one respond to this because we think that our identity is a historical identity. We are Iranian and we are Jew. And we are as much as Iranian, as much as we are Jew. If you Iranian Jew go to Israel, they usually want to come back to Iran or you want to go to USA or UK because the culture of the Israel, which is based on a part of a sort of racism, cannot be tolerated by Iranian Jew. I think that Zionism and anti-Semitism are sibling brothers in any, because both of them say that Jewish people are different from other people. We do not need the manipulation of the Zionists because they only can disturb our condition. They would not improve our condition. Ya mar sorchu talaqi nakone. Man fikr mikunam sorchu tarin millat hay dunya irani ha hastan. Va bestiyar az nuqat kishvar ma dar shomal va junub be tasarruf dushman dar umade. Bakhshi az Qafqaz, Asiyay miyane inha marbut be Iran bude va inha ro در قراردات های ظالمانه از کشور ما گرفتن قرارداد ترکمنچه های هستش که بخشی از خاک ایران رو روزها بردن مثل آزربایجان مثل سایر کشور های منطقه مرزی ما و اینها همه نشون دهنده این است که ما همواره مورد حمله بودیم و هیچ وقت ما به کشوری کشوری حمله نکردیم در اسناد سازمان ملل متحد یونایتد نیشن هم همینا هست و ایرانی ها به عنوان سلجو ترین کشور ها مطرح بودن و ایرانی ها دارای یک تفکر و یک فرهنگی هستن که بیشتر به اصطلاح نفوذشون رو در دنیا از طریق فرهنگی یعنی نفوذ سلطلبانه تاریخ تمدن ایران نشون میده که ملت ایران ملت سلجوی بوده چه دلیل داره که ایرانی ها که اینقدر سلطلب بودن و همیشه هم همواره صلح به همه جای دنیا بردن چه دلیل داره بخوان ملتی باشن که امروز به غیر از این فکر بکنن Civilization is not necessarily a bad thing. It's a good thing. You know, civilization in the, in the good sense of the word. Where, or at least it can. Right. Where, where, we, where it ends up increasing the ethical and the spiritual and the, and the goodness in people. Where it allows them, gives them a space to grow spiritually and ethically, as opposed to just being a materialistic. I think this is the, this is the significant difference between Western civilization and what Iran is trying to do, is we're trying to have that material welfare and that technological advancement, but maintain that spirituality and that eth ethical aspect of it as well, which is lost in the West, unfortunately.
During the Iran-Iraq war, the Iraqis used chemical weapons on us. Everybody knows this. It's not, you know, propaganda. It's, it's a fact. It's an established fact by Western medical authorities that Saddam, with the help of the Americans and certain European countries, used chemical weapons in, in the war. And we never retaliated, even though we had the ability to do that. But we didn't do it because of moral reasons. The reason why, the, the main reason why we don't have nuclear weapons is because it is immoral. That is actually the main reason why we don't have nuclear weapons. We have come to this conclusion, and this is reflected in the religious edict and in the religious guidance that we have from our scholars and, and at the head of that, the, the supreme leadership, a, a clear edict forbidding the use of nuclear weapons because it is a moral issue. وقتی که آمریکا میاد یه تحریمی رو دیکته میکنه و بقیه اروپایی هم انجامش میدن بالاخره دستای همشون یک جا هست و به هم دیگه کمک میکنن کمک میکنن که سلطه داشته باشن حالا من نمیدونم این سلطه به چه درد میخوره مگه ما ها همه انسان نیستیم چه فرقی میکنی با هم توی دین ما سیاه و سفید نداریم مسیحی و مسلمون نداریم همه با هم برابر و یکسان هستن It's made to seem normal that uh, people face drone attacks, uh, depleted uranium attacks, that this is uh, put into a, a formula, a, a psychological warfare for, formula that uh, you know keeps keeps being amped up. This ISIL concoction. It's like some kind of Hollywood horror story. Understanding the magnitude of the fraud perpetuated by Western lackeys. It is a matter of integrity, if not survival, that we consign the myth of Iran as a threat to the rubbish bin of history. In the next episode, reality and intelligence will be our guide in identifying the very real threats to humanity and just how serious those threats are. <laughs>